So in the previous video, I showed you these uh, new two megabyte EPROMs that I've received from eBay uh, for my bad apple on a breadboard project. Uh, check out the previous videos if you're not sure what that's about. So these uh, EPROMs are 42 pin chips and my EPROM programmer only supports 40 pin chips. I was aware of that when I bought the chips um, and uh, found uh, these adapter kits that you can buy, which allow you to plug those chips into the smaller socket. Uh, so I ordered one of those kits as well, and that has now arrived. And here it is. So uh, let's have a look at what's inside. So yeah, we have uh, a few to uh, toggle switches. Um, six, pin, six pins on those, they might be double throw, double pull and double throw maybe, um, another one there. Uh, these are the jumpers which are just uh, a triple, triple, triple pin headers with a connector you can put on either side. So that's very standard stuff. And then we have four surface mount resistors here. My eyesight is not good enough to read the numbers on those, I'll have to do that under a microscope in a bit. Another couple of surface mount resistors. And yeah, there we go, there's a couple of surface mount transistors there. That I need to check what the values of these resistors are, so I have them there on top of the micro microscope stand. Uh, you can probably read them on the video anyway. Um, but yeah, these microscopes are really handy things to have around. Uh, this was a fairly cheap one off Amazon, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it does the job. So you can clearly see there, the smaller strip is 102 value resistors and the larger strip is 103. Uh, the way you read those, the last digit refers to the exponent, the number of zeros to add on the end. So 102 means one zero and two more zeros i.e. 1k, 1000 ohms, and 103 means 10 one zero and three more zeros, that is 10k ohms, 10,000 ohms. So it looks like we've got two 1k resistors and four 10k resistors here. It is partially assembled already, the, the ZIF socket appears to be, oh it's not soldered to the board, it's just sellotapes on. Okay, so we'll need to solder the ZIF socket on, uh, and you can see at the top here, this is the shorter socket, uh, which I'll only solder the pin headers into, and that will allow this to then plug into the smaller uh, the smaller length uh, at PROM programmer. I believe what happens is up here, you get to choose whether the high address pins of the 42 pin at PROM are enabled or not, and by choosing different combinations of those, you program a different eighth of the chip. So there's three bits here which are not going to be wired through to the programmer itself. They're just going to be hard-coded with the jumpers here. Uh, the programmer itself will believe will think it's programming half the capacity, sorry, an eighth of the capacity of this chip through these pins down here. Uh, and these three jumpers will choose which, which eighth of its two megabyte capacity gets programmed. Yeah, you can see here the, the two, two resistors I mentioned before and a transistor, another resistor up here next to the jumpers, another resistor on the back. The next thing I want to do is solder in these pin headers. Uh, I'm going to start with those, they are fairly low, low profile on the board. Um, I'll probably do those and then some of the surface mount components and finish up with the larger ZIF socket just because soldering the larger stuff in first makes it a bit harder to get to the pads for the, for the smaller components.
And here's the finished board all soldered together. I put all the components on. Um, this uh, web address down the bottom leads to a GitHub page uh, of the designer of the board and that explained uh, which resistor should go in which position. So no problems there. Um, that's all soldered together and uh, should be ready to use. Uh, and just on the back, there was, one, there was one more surface mount to fit on the back there. Uh, but yeah, that's all, that's all looking good. So yeah, next step will be to plug that into the programmer and test it. I'll probably just check I can read the data off the chips first and then put some new, new data on and make sure that's all going in as expected. Anyway, so that'll, that'll be next time.